I'm gonna go live and show how I create my own swimwear, how I create my own patterns and how I sew it up. So I thought it'd be a really, really good idea to go live and share my process with you as I've been creating quite a lot of swimwear lately. But I will just wait a couple minutes for people to join. Hey everyone, I'm just gonna wait a minute or so just to let people join because I know you get a notification. I've got my cup of coffee. It's so lovely to see everyone. So what I thought I would do today is show my process of how I create the patterns of my own swimwear and also show my sewing kind of method, tips and tricks I've kind of learned along the way and also answer your questions because I know swimwear can be pretty daunting. So if anyone's tried it before, please like comment below. I'd love to know what your experience in creating swimwear is. I know when I was a teenager, I had a go at creating swimwear and it was an absolute mess. <laughs> so that kind of put me off until recently when I started creating my own and now I absolutely love it. So as I go through things, just ask questions as I go through, but please just, yeah, share your thoughts, share your ideas, share if you want to make something and I can give you some tips as well. So I thought I'd start by just showing you the pattern cutting process. So obviously you need a pattern before you start creating your own swimwear. You can, of course, buy your own sewing patterns, but I'm one about making them. So this is the process I kind of went through to make my own sewing pattern. So what I did was I took a swimsuit I already have, which is now actually in the bin because the fabric had all gotten funny. So I can't actually show you that, but from that swimsuit, what I did was I made a pattern from it and also adjusted things that didn't quite work so because I have quite a long torso, I tend to find swimsuits that give me a wedgie because I'm just too tall for them, so they're really tight. So I wanted to add in extra height. So what I tend to do is I take photos of my swimwear whilst I'm trying it on, and then I'll literally draw on where I want extra height in. So for example, say I've got this bikini here, um, which fits me really nicely, but the only bit that's really annoying is, again, this bit is too short because I need it to be extra long for my torso. So what I did was then I drew on my picture, add in a centimetre here. And just remember, if you are adding in extra or taking away extra, you're going to take into consideration the amount of stretch the fabric has got. So you don't need to add in exact, the exact amount you need to add in less because obviously the stretch is going to add in more for you anyway. So say for example, if I wanted to add in one centimetre extra height to this, I want to just add in 0.7 because generally the stretch will be about 30%. So I'm just going to do simple equation that I can show you how to do um, on another tutorial of how to work out how much to add in. But just bear in mind, you're not going to be adding in the exact amount. You're going to be adding in a proportion of it because the fabric will stretch. So that's what I do. I properly analyze everything. I do it for all the clothes I make. If I'm copying from something I already have, I try it on, I wear it for a bit. I think, oh, if I'm gonna make this even better, do I wanna change the sleeve length? Do I wanna add in a bit more volume? And I really like analyze everything to be able to create my patterns to be even better. So then once I've um, analyzed what I'm creating, I then make a pattern from it. So all I did, for the swimsuit was traced around a pattern I already had. And then what I've done is then added in extra height as I've gone along. So this is the pattern I made for the first swimsuit. And the reason why I start simple rather than starting straight away with the cutout swimsuit I made is so that I can really test the fit first and also I'm not wasting time and effort doing like cutouts, doing extra design things. So I always start simple and then build on that. So I'll always start with like a really simple stretch top, which I've, I've got one on at the moment, and then I'll build on that. So then if I wanna add on like a ruffle at the bottom, I'll then add on a ruffle afterwards, after I've checked that the simple version is really good, then you can kind of just build on it. So it's getting those basic blocks to build on. So what I'm gonna do is turn this into my basic swimwear block as well. So all I literally did was traced around it, added in extra height, and then I've added seam allowance around the edge. So I've just done a one centimeter seam allowance. So that gives me a little bit that I can trim off the edge and then also enough width that I can overlock. So I'll just show you what it looks like on the inside. So like this. 
So this one here is really clean. I've got a lining fabric here and I've got a swimwear fabric here, but I'll talk a little bit more about fabrics in a minute. So once I've got this, then I made a twirl of that just to check the fit. So I've made this twirl here and this gave me the chance as well to test the sewing process as well. And the same with everything you sew, you wanna make sure you're using a similar fabric to what you're gonna be using in the end. So if you're creating swimwear, you really do need to test it in the swimwear fabric. You can't just get away with just using a jersey or just using obviously woven fabric. You really do need to test it in a swimwear fabric. Ways to make it a bit cheaper is to get like a larger swimsuit, maybe from a charity shop, cut it up or get a swimsuit that has got loads of fabric in it, cut it up and use that. I couldn't find any at the time. So I just bought a bit of swimwear fabric to use um, to create this twirl. Uh, I can wear this twirl, but I'm gonna be honest, it is a little bit too see-through to wear with other people around, I think. <laughs> so um, I probably actually won't wear this when anyone else is around just because it's white. And one thing I would say is be very, very wary of white. It is very see-through. Even if I did like double layer, you'd probably even want a triple layer of this so it's not see-through. So I would probably avoid white if you don't want it to be see-through or if you're not doing any padding or anything like that underneath. So then once I made this one, I then went on to do something a little bit more, um, bit more extreme and started doing the cutout one that you might have seen on my Instagram. So I started off with the same swimsuit like this. Then I've changed the sleeve, the um, sorry, the shaping here of the straps a little bit just to make it more of a square neckline. But I'm literally starting off with the same pattern. And then I've started drawing on these cutout shapes. It's a little bit hard for me to show you, but this is what it kind of looks like. So then I made a quick twirl of that, which is gonna be really hard for me to show you because it's just gonna all kind of fall apart. And with this twirl, I didn't finish any of the edges. I didn't finish any of the seams because I already kind of got the hang of the sewing process when I was doing this. So I literally have just sewn up the seams where I need to sew up. So you can see here, literally no edges finished. It's not double layered. It's not got lining or anything. I've just sewn it just to check that everything's kind of okay. It of course does feel a little bit baggier because the more layers you have, the stronger it kind of like sucks you in. And obviously with the um, rubber as well, around it as well, it'll feel tighter as well. So I did know that when I was trying this one on, it was gonna feel pretty loose, but it will still, you'll still know if it fits really well. So again, another twirl of this before I made the final one, which is here, which is again, gonna be really hard to show you because it's not gonna stand, hold up, whatever. So kind of like this. And you'll probably have seen pictures again on Instagram. And so if you wanted to make bikinis, you can then use this basic swimsuit pattern to make bikinis. Basically a bikini is you just cut out this section here. So that's what I've done with my bikini patterns. I've got um, a little bandeau here. And this is my little bandeau pattern. So this is just one half, center front's down here. This is this shape here. And then I've got the back as well, like so. But because I know how much I need from this, I'm literally just copying this shape here. And I do the same as what I do with all my other trials. I try them on, I draw on them. So I put this on and then what I do is I get a um, water erasable pen and then I'll literally just draw around where I want the shape to be and I'll draw on where I want the top to be and then I'll just copy the pattern from that. So it's really simple once you've kind of got your basic starting blocks from. So this is just a little trial of the um, bando that I was just testing out with a bit of a scrap piece of fabric. So just like a little bando. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this with a tie back. So again, I'm starting off simple and I'm building on that rather than growing so complicated and making it frustrating. I'm always starting simple and then building on it to create more and more kind of elaborate designs. So this is the one I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this color here to create a little bandeau with a strap around the back. So all I've done to turn this back piece, which would go at the back rather than the front, into a tie back is I've literally just lengthened the pattern so it's a lot longer. So this will create my tie that then will tie up nicely on the back and just makes it a little bit more interesting. 
So that's kind of the pattern cutting process. It's not as daunting as it may seem. And once you start getting your first sort of starting block, your basic blocks, then you've got something to build on. And you can always adjust these as well. So if you did have a sewing pattern you already have, and it's a swimmer pattern, and you want to do a full bust adjustment and add more room in here, you can of course add more room in this area here to do a full bust adjustment. And um, this is something I show a lot more about inside Fitting Confidence, which is gonna be opening up really, really soon. So feel free to join the wait list because that's gonna be opening up in August for spots. And it's gonna be all about creating perfectly fitting clothes. So I've got some more things that I just wanna share here, more about um, the materials and the sewing as well. So when you're sourcing materials, what I would say is, what I've noticed is some swimwear fabric is softer than others. The better the quality, the softer it is. Because sometimes swimwear can be a little bit scratchy, but I found when I've got swimwear fabric that is um, nicer quality, then it's not scratchy at all. It's actually really, really soft. So this here is really soft. And then I got another one, what did I get? So this white one's a little bit more scratchy because it's not as um, nicer quality. Most of the swimmer fabrics I've been getting are from the Good Fabric store, and you'll know I'm like obsessed with that store because she does like the best fabrics. Um, and she's got a discount, I think, till the end of today as well. I posted that yesterday, and I think it goes on till the end of today. And literally, I'll buy half a metre for a bikini, and I'll buy a metre for a swimsuit. And a metre is, what, £18? But I can still get a swimsuit out of it and a bikini out of it. So I've basically paid... 18 pounds plus the trimmings which is maybe a few more pounds for two sets of outfits which is so much cheaper and they're ethical so the one i use i think it's an eco line i can't remember how you say it but anyway it's an ethical um swimwear fabric they basically recycle fishing lines and stuff like that to turn it into swimwear and once it's been used they can repurpose it again and use it again and again and again which is really really good so you really don't need much fabric to make swimwear which is super good um, and then in terms of rubber, what I would say is yes, you can use normal elastic, but it won't last as well with the sea, the salt, the sun cream, all that kind of stuff. So I would always go for um, a rubber rather than a normal elastic. And it looks like this, it's literally just like a piece of rubber and it comes in different widths. And there's a website called James Tailoring. He does ethical ones as well. Um, as you can tell, I'm all about the ethical ones, so I can't tell you about the normal ones if that's what you're wanting, but they're not that expensive at all. So this is just a wider one. So for this one, I've been using it to create this little twirl of like just a little simple top and I've done like a band around the bottom. So if you wanted to do a waistband, you could just get a wider one and then it will just give you more support around here or more support under the bust. If you've got a larger bust, I think it's really good to do a wider elastic. And I think the more support you want, generally the slightly wider elastic you'll want around the edges as well. So at the moment I've gone for a 6.5 millimeter around the edge, but you can get like a nine, I think it is like a 12. So there's different widths. So have a little bit of a play because depending on your size and shape will depend on what kind of elastic you want to use as well. But what you want to do when you're sewing it, which took a little bit of trial and error for me, which is why these straps here look a little bit um, pulled is because I pulled this a little bit too much, which means it's a bit tight here. But what I found is you wanna pull it about 5% as you're sewing. So if you had 10 centimeters in your hand, you would then just pull it like really slightly, hardly anything at all. And that will just give you that extra kind of support. And you're gonna be putting your elastic around your edges. So you can see here, I've got it all the way around the neckline, all the way around the armholes, and all the way around the legs. But you don't need to put it down the seams. So you're literally just doing it around the edges. And what you can do is there's two different ways to sew it in. The first way is what I prefer, and I try and do this as much as I possibly can, because it's easier and it's quicker, is, um, to sew it in to the seam. So here, around the bottom legs of this swimsuit, I've hidden it in here, so you can't see anything. And that means if this rolled over, you wouldn't be able to see anything. Because I've used a double layer here, rather than a lining, I use a double layer 
it means it just looks nicer. I really like using a double layer. Um, but you'll see around the cutouts, I have to do the elastic. And what I would do next time actually is I do the elastic in between these two layers so you can't see it at all. It doesn't really flip over anyway, but it's more just for my peace of mind perfectionism over here. Um, so yeah, I would, if you can, do as many seams like this as possible, which is what I've done for, I'm trying to find the other pair. Let's see the pair I'm looking for. I don't think I have them here. I have like a little high-waisted pair of these. And on the high-waisted pair, I've done it all around here, all around here, and it's only the top where I've got the finish like this. So here I've done it properly. I've done um, the elastic in the middle. And this one I was trying out using my um, sewing machine a bit more. So it works really well, even if you don't have an overlocker, but obviously if you have an overlocker, it's a little bit better because the overlocker allows it naturally to stretch because it's got, that's basically what it's made for. It's made for allowing stretch fabrics to stretch naturally. But if you're going to be using your sewing machine, make sure you do a zigzag stitch. So you'll see there, I've done like a zigzag stitch. You want it kind of a little bit long. So I do like five and I do it about two wide. And that just allows it to stretch. Whereas if it's a straight stri stitch, it won't let your fabric stretch. So that's how the rubber works and it's actually really nice to use so I wouldn't be afraid of it at all. The next thing I would say is lining fabric. I, personal preference, I don't know why, but I haven't enjoyed working with lining fabric so I've just basically stopped using lining. I just bought a bit to try out but I find it sticks. So if you're using a walking foot on your sewing machine, which I started using when I was like sewing around the edges and a walking foot means it allows the top layer to walk along with the bottom layer. So at the moment, you've only got feed dogs below your fabric, but with a walking foot, you've basically got feed dogs along the top. So it'll do like this motion, whereas normally you've just got this motion. So this top layer is not moving, which is when the top layer kind of slides out, especially with slippery fabrics. And so when my fabrics are slightly slippery, so what I found was with lining fabric, the walking foot tends to grab onto it and get stuck to it. And I don't really like the feel of it so much and it doesn't give as much support. So now what I do is I do a double layer of fabric and that's what I prefer. So I've got two layers like so. And it also means I can just get a really nice finish. I've got no sewing long here. It just, yeah, it just looks a lot neater. So now all of these are double layer. This is double layer, this swimsuit as well. But it's personal preference. You may love lining fabric. You may not enjoy it so much like I didn't. So let me see what else I was going to share with you. Oh yeah, so cutting out your fabric. There's two different ways you can cut out. And again, I think it's just personal preference. Um, the one first way is using scissors and then just pinning it. Make sure you've got really sharp pins as well. The blunter your pins are, the more you're going to find you snag your fabric and it pulls or like something just like unravels or something. So I always say use sharp pins. When I was younger, I never really bothered with them. I was just like, oh yeah, I've got these in the drawer. But then once you invest in some good pins, they'll work a lot better. So you just want some sharp ones. And then um, what I would say is you can either just cut it out with scissors, which is what I've been doing, or you could use a rotary cutter with obviously a cutting board below, and that'll work fine as well, and just put weights on your fabric. So either way, it's fine. I use scissors just because that's what I've always done but you could of course use a rotary cutter. Okay, so the next overlocker versus sewing machine. Um, I've already explained about that. Yeah, I think I've pretty much explained everything I wanted to share with you. But the main thing I'd say is don't be scared by sewing swimwear. I was pretty scared by sewing it because my teenage experience, I tried to look for the one when I went back to my dad's, but I couldn't find it. But anyway, that experience really put me off. Um, but now I've been doing it, I love it. And it's actually really quick. Like you can just whip up a pair of like little shorts in like half an hour and you can create whatever you want to make and it'll fit you really nicely. If you've not got like the normal body shape, which everyone's body shape is normal, then you can adjust it to you as well. So it's made me actually want to wear swimsuits. Whereas before I really didn't enjoy wearing them because they weren't comfortable. So. I would definitely recommend doing it. And if you've got any questions, pop them below. I'm just gonna have a look now. 
love the rotary cutter. Yeah, I need to start having a little bit more of a go at a rotary cutter. I haven't used one for a while. I used to use them all the time because I did patchwork and quilting. And obviously with that, accuracy is king. If you don't get things accurate, then all your lines don't match up. And I used to use them all the time, but for some reason I always just use scissors. I think it's because what I used in the industry was we always used scissors. But I've been wondering lately about having a little go with a rotary cutter as well. Amazing. Has anyone got any questions? My bottoms never work well, Amber. Um, your bottoms, I promise they will work well. If you tell me what doesn't work so well with your swimwear bottoms, I can give you a couple tips because I know you can definitely do it and it's not as bad as it feels. It's just the main things are don't pull the fabric. The same with everything, just allow it to go through the sewing machine. Don't pull it. Don't um, try and distort it in any way. Like when I'm overlocking, I kind of am just guiding it. I'm not pulling it in any way. I'm literally just guiding it and letting it just do its thing. And the same when I'm sewing, I'm just guiding it. I'm not pulling anything. And that will really, really help, especially with stretch fabric. It's so easy just to like stretch it more and more and then it wrinkles up. I just remembered one other thing I wanted to show you as well. So if you do have an overlocker, you can do these like really nice fun hems. Like, so this one here is called a lettuce hem and there's a little tutorial on my reels how to do this and then on the YouTube as well. Um, and that is a really nice finish as well if you don't want to sew loads of hems. So say if you had like a little bandeau top like this and then you just had like a flounce on it, you could literally just really nicely finish it with this stitch and it looks so neat. I'm just gonna stretch it there so you can see it a bit better. But it looks really neat. So there's loads of different ways you can kind of like play around with it. And I feel like now I've made a few, I'm gonna get even more adventurous with the design ideas and what I'm doing. I've got a few more materials I wanna use um, to create some more designs as well. Sophie. Hey, Sophie. Um, when you sew double layer, how have you finished it off when you turn it through? So when I've sewn the double layer and I've turned it through, so it's finished like this, literally all I've done is um, sewn my two layers together with my rubber on top and overlocked it. That's it. There's no other finishing. That's why I say it's so much quicker. There's no other like fanciness to it. It's just really, really quick. I sew all the layers together. I've noticed on Instagram, some people overlock it first and then put the rubber on top, but I just, I'm, I'm always about the quick method. So <laughs> I just sew it all in one layer and I've not had a problem with it at all. And I'll make sure where I sew the rubber is, is where the blade is. So it doesn't cut this, because otherwise I might as well buy a wider one. But then if I'm cutting it off, then it's just basically a waste of money. So I make sure this edge of the rubber here is where the blade is and then this is where the stitching is. So this width is about the, the width of the overlocker stitch. It's very slight, it's like one mil wider, but that's fine. But yeah, so literally I just sew it all together and then I turn it through. So the same way you'd normally just overlock a edge and then just turn it the right way around, that's all I do. I'm so glad it was helpful, Michelle. And any questions, let me know later on if you're having a little go. Um, I've not tried sewing swimwear yet, too scared, but I'm now inspired to try. Yay, this is the whole point. I want to inspire you to try different things because it's basically like, I went to the gym the other day and had this epiphany of, I used to hate the gym, but now I know that I can do weights, then I actually really, really like it. And I used to find it really boring because I'd just be on the treadmill for an hour and I'd just be like, well, this is a bit of a waste of time. It's not a waste of time, but to me, that's how it felt. And I think sewing is a bit like that. You find some things you love, some things you don't love. Like the way I was saying, I don't really enjoy sewing with linings. Um, that's just personal preference. The same way I tend to cut with scissors rather than use a rotary cutter. Like it's personal preference. And it's the same with everything. And it's just having a go and just trying it out. But the easiest way, honestly, to make patterns is to start off with stuff you've got because you can analyze it, you can then adjust it and then you can go from there. But yeah, it was so lovely to see everyone today. Thank you for turning up, thank you for coming. And if you're watching the replay, because I'll save the replay to Instagram TV, let me know your thoughts, let me know if you've got any questions later on. And if you're struggling to know kind of where to get started and everything, and you've got some ideas, 
Send me a couple pictures over of what you want to create and I can give you a couple pointers. But have a beautiful day, everyone. It was lovely to see you and I will speak to you really, really soon.